Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, we've got a fun one for you today. We've got three little image hover effects, no coding involved. Our first one up at the top here, we've got a black and white image. When I put my mouse over it, it's going to go into a colored image. Take the mouse off, it's going to go back to black and white. You see these quite often on websites. Our next one down below, we got a regular image there. When I put my mouse over it, it's going to flip to a different image. Take the mouse back off, as you can see, it's flipping back to that other image. And our third one down here, we got a regular image there. When I put my mouse over it, it's going to have some content appear on top. Really easy to do. Like I say, no coding involved in this at all today. So let's get started. I've got pretty similar page open here that we did the other day for sections and it's got the same images on it so let's enable the visual builder okay once that's activated let's go down to our first image here this is just a regular image module in fact if I get rid of it and put a new one in there you'll know exactly what I'm talking about for anybody that doesn't I've hit the little dark button to add a new module I've just used an image module and here we can choose the image. I'll put in that same image. Great. When you hover over these images that you put them in, they'll come up with the image names. These are AI generated images and they've got a crazy name like that. I really don't want that to pop up. So if you don't want that to pop up or you want to change it to something more appropriate, you can do that over in the advanced in attributes. And there it is. You can either make it something more appropriate or get rid of it altogether. Then when you hover over, nothing's going to pop up there. Great. So I'm happy with that. Now our first one here, when we hovered over it before, we turned it from a black and white to a color. You can do it either way around. To do that, we're going to go to design. We're going to, need to go down to filters. We've actually got saturation as our second filter there. Saturation is the amount of color that you see. So if I bring it all the way down to the left, it makes it black and white. If I take it all the way up to the right, it's going to make it crazy colors. It's going to oversaturate. But you can get some amazing effects with these filters. Okay, so I'm going to have mine start off black and white. by Having the saturation all the way down to the left there, 0%. Now to create the hover effect, and this is common to all Divi modules, sections and rows. If you hover up over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear. Go to the thing you want to affect, in our case, the saturation here. If there's a little arrow there, we can create a hover effect. Just click on the little arrow, brings up two little tabs. Got a desktop from when the mouse is not on it. I want it to be black and white before they put their mouse on it. Then we've got the hover tab up here. Click on the hover tab. When they hover over it, I want it to come back full color. So I'm going to bring this back to 100%. Now you can slide, you can type in a value. You can also increment up and down with the little arrows on the side there. <coughs> so when they're not hovering on it black and white when they put their mouse on it it's going to become color now the time it takes to go from desktop to hover with divi by default is 300 milliseconds which is pretty quick i like to slow it down for a bit of grace and drama it's entirely up to you but if you want to do the same go over to your advance here we'll find transitions Here's a transition duration, the time it takes to change this. I'm going to take it from the default 300 mils there up to maybe well, close to a second, three quarters of a second, whatever works for you. I find with these horror effects, if you slow it down a bit, it just makes it a little bit more graceful. Transition speed curve, I tend to use for my horror effects is ease in out. Ease will work fine. These are all fairly similar, but you'll find in certain situations, some will work better than others. For my horror effect, I tend to go for the ease in ease out but do play with them and see what you can come up with that's our first one right there let's just save those changes now we've got that let's just save and i'll demonstrate this one hit the little purple button save draft or publish if you're ready and let's exit the visual builder great so we're starting off with a black and white image there when i put my mouse over it you're going to see it change that cover color one in about 850 milliseconds and when we take the mouse off, it's going to ease back out again. 
And that's a nice little effect to have on your site. Great. Well, let's move on. Let's re-enable the Visual Builder. Our next one, I'm on the other page now, was a simple image flip. We've got one image there. Take the mouse off. It goes back to the original. And again, really easy to do. No coding involved. We'll roll on down to our second image here. I've got the Builder enabled at the moment. Here's our second image. To do this particular one, we're going to have one image as the image module here. I'm going to take that writing away. Let's do that first. Advanced attribute. Delete. We're good to go there. Great. Well, to make this work, we've got our regular image module here. And I'm going to put another image in the background of the column that this is sitting in. To do that, we need to go into the row, the green tab for the row. We're working on the right hand column here, which is column number two. Always find background under content. I'm going to click on background. Third tab is background image. I'm going to choose a different image. Let's just pop that one in perhaps. Now, of course, you can't see it because this image is over the top of it. Now, I'm sure some of you have worked this out already based on what we did above. So I'm going to save my column setting. Take it back to the row settings, going to save those. Now I'm going to go into my image. I'm going to go to my design and down to the filters once more, which is what we did before. Now, depending on which one you want to see first, we're going to go down to the opacity here. If you want to see the one that's in the background first, we'll take our little opacity slider all the way down to zero, makes our top one invisible, and we can see that back image there. If you want to see the other one first, leave it at 100%. And we'll do the same thing as we did above. Going to roll over the dark writing, hit the little arrow to get the hover effects up. Desktop, we'll leave it on that one. When they hover over it, click on the hover tab. I want to see the other one, so I'm going to take the opacity down to zero. Perfect. And again, we slow it down. I'll go over to advanced and transitions. There's a default 300 mils. I'm going to take mine up again, close to a second. So, well, let's just make it a second for argument's sake, 1,000 milliseconds. And again, I'm going to pop that to ease in, ease out. Great. We'll save that. Well, rather than save and demo this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the next one. We'll look at these two both together in a moment. So let's move on down to our next one. And our next one, I'll roll down this page here. What did we have going on? We've got an image there. Then when we hover over, we've got some content floating on and we've got a little dark background happening there. So you can read that writing better over that complex image. Perfect. Well, let's do that one. Okay. So if we look here, we've got a regular image. Well, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to trash it. What I'm going to do now is put in whatever module you want to hover in over the top of an image. To do that, click a little black button again, choose whatever module you want to use, and this will work with any module you want. I'm going to use a call to action because it's got a little button on it. Let's just move this over to the right so you can see. And there's no button there at the moment. Button will not turn up on a call to action module till you put the link in. Obviously, put your title in there, put what you want your button to say there, and your content right here. If we go on link down below there, I'm going to put a link where it says button link at the top. I'm just going to use a hashtag for a placeholder. As soon as I put anything in there, our little button's going to turn up. Okay. We've got a blue background on this. I don't want any background on this at all. Well, I might want a, a black background in a minute. But let's do a couple of things first. Let's just say what we've got here. And based on what we did on our last one, you should be able to figure out what we're doing here. I'm going to go into our row again, the green tab. I'm going to put an image in the background of this column, column one, left-hand column. Background again, always under content. Number three, background image. Choose whatever image is, is you want to put in the background there. I think we used this fella before. I may as well chuck him back in there. Now again, of course, we can't see it because our module's on top. Now initially, I just want to see this image. Then when they hover over it, I want this content to come in, but I'm not too keen on that blue background. 
So let's save our column settings here. Save the row settings. We're going to go back into this call to action module now. Dark tab for the module. I'm going to go down to background. Remember, always under content. I'm going to change it to a black background. I'm going to click on the actual background field itself. I'm going to drag the opacity slider, this variegated slider down till we can see enough of that image, but I still want to be able to read that writing. So something like that perhaps is going to work for me. If you want to restyle the button, make it different colors and shapes, you can do that over in design. Just click on button and customize button. I'm going to leave mine just as it is for the moment. But initially, I don't want to see any of this content or button. I just want to see a nice crisp picture. And I'm sure you figured out how we're going to do this. Let's close up our button styles here. Still on the design tab. I'm going to go back down to our filters tab. And again, we're going to use the opacity just like we did with that image above. So initially, I just want to see the image itself. So I'm going to drag my opacity slider down to zero. We're left with a nice crisp image when they hover over it. Get our hover state up again. Make sure we're on the hover tab. When they hover over it, I want our content to fade in so they can read it and click on the call to action button there if they want to. And again, transition wise, I'm going to slow it down to around about a second or something like that. Obviously, it's entirely up to you, but I find if you do these with a bit of time up there, it does make it more effective. Again, I'm going to use ease in, ease out, and we should be good to go. Let's save our changes here. It should go back to the regular image. Great. We'll save our page changes down here. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. And there we have it. There's our first one, our black and white to color. Nice. If we go down to our next one, this is an image swap and it's going to take a second from go from this image to fade into that image. Take the mouse back off, going to fade back out again. That's great for sort of before and after effects and things like that. I've used that on several sites for that. And our third one here, we've got a simple text over image hover effect. So when I hover over, that info is going to fade in and they can read it, click on the call to action if they want to. Take the mouse off, it's going to disappear back out again. People are mousing around your site, this sort of thing happens. It tends to get their attention really quickly, which is great, just what you want with a site. Like I say, no coding involved, really easy to do, and a bit of eye candy as well. So there you go. There's three little hover effects you can do with your Divi site with no coding whatsoever. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you. or make a little demo video just like this one. Well, once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.